All right, guys. So instead of doing constant network, let's actually move on to apply some forces first. Uh, no, it doesn't matter which way you go first, right? Uh, but it would be better to have the force because uh, when we can try to test if the force works, and then we can do constant network uh, based on that. And the drag out from transform, and holding an Alt and click to create some reroute node until I have some space to work on. Now from there, I'm gonna drop down a node, and for this node, I'm gonna rename it to um, exploding. Uh, exploding base, okay, exploding position or whatever that makes sense, right? So now this is basically that original sphere. I'm gonna go ahead and do a SO offset to give it some uh, to convert it into a fog, and then down from there, I'm gonna create a scatter to scatter a bunch of points like this. Uh, I probably don't need that much, so let me lower down the count. Okay, 150 is probably enough. I don't have enough, uh, a lot of pieces anyways. Uh, it's just a little bit higher maybe. Alright, and then after that, I'm going to create a attribute wrangle. For this attribute wrangle, I'm going to actually apply a, some coding to <coughs> create forces that are going outward, outwards uh, from the volume. So here, what I want to know is where the center of this uh, breaking origin is. So I'm going to say vector center will be equal to get bbox center, right? I'm going to use the first input, OK? And then I need to calculate the direction outwards. So vector out direction will be equal to the current position of the point minus the center, right? Uh, now just to actually isolate the direction from the magnitude, I'm gonna normalize it. Okay. Now just to visualize it, I'm gonna make the normal equals to that odd direction, and let's take a look. The normal direction now is pointing outwards. Okay. Now just to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to actually times that with a random um, a random value. Uh, let's see if this random gives me vector values. Let's see. So let's press F1 and take a look. Um, so I'm going to look for the random vex function and see what it does. It does return some vector too. Okay, just need the position. So uh, let's say, let's create a vector here. Vector position rand will be equals to random. And then add position. This is gonna guarantee to give me a vector results. I'm gonna say, how about times our results with that position random. Let's see what we got. Now we got some random directions instead of all going outwards. It could be more fun. And <laughs> let's uh, let's see if we can actually have some more control of it. Maybe we can create an attribute called fuzziness, and then we can use that to define like how much we want uh, the fuzziness to be. So <clears throat> this value here will be multiplied by this channel here called random. Okay. And then I'm gonna plus the original uh, direction. <coughs> uh, this is it. So let's just calculate it here without the random. And then I'm gonna change it by make it equals to itself uh, times one minus channel random and then plus itself times position rand and then uh, 
times channel random. Now what this should give me is that I have this random and the higher this is, the more fuzzy it will become. <clears throat> okay. So just give it some random colors. And then I can also make the force equals to that instead of normal, but we can leave the normal there for visualization purposes. Let's do vector at force to be equal to uh, uh, also the other direction. Okay, um, we can probably also times that with something, but we can also do that in the uh, sourcing part when we were actually copying the force into the simulation. So let's say this is good. So uh, I'm going to create a null and call it uh, explosion force uh, source. Oh, force. Okay, now I'm going to use this guy here in the simulation. So right in the simulation, oops, and go back to frame one. So on the rigid body server, I'm gonna grab out from the post server and create a geometry rangle. And for the geometry rangle, I'm gonna tell it to use itself as the surf, the first input or not. It doesn't really matter. Uh, the second one will be the actual force we created earlier. So exploding force. Okay. Now here in the code, I need to find for every piece, right, we're running out the points, which is basically what the pieces are. I'm going to say um, int near point num will be equals to near point, and then first inputs, sorry, add bit. So basically this is going to give me the closest, closest point on the force I created earlier to the current piece. It's gonna give me the point number of that point. Now I'm gonna ask that point what force uh, is on you. What's the first attribute on you? So uh, vector near force will be equals to a, a point, right point. And I'm gonna ask for, again, uh, the second input, I'm going to ask for first attribute. I'm going to ask it, ask the uh, near point number, not that particular point, near point now. Okay. <clears throat> so when I get the force, I need to actually create a force for myself, right? V at force will be equal to that near force. Okay, maybe we can also time that with a channel, call it. Uh, force skill. Right. Let's create that channel and I'm gonna make it maybe 10 for now. Okay, now I should get a force that is 10 times bigger than the force we get from, uh, we create, created from that uh, <clears throat> explosion force. So now let's do a simulation and see if we got anything. a little slow. <laughs> But as you can see, things are starts to fly away, right? The reason they're flying away is because the force we applied smaller pieces goes further because uh, they have lesser mass, they have lesser um, strength to return their uh, state. So now we have the explosion happening, especially on this part, as you can see. It's also pu uh, pushing these guys away. Now the reason all the pieces are being pushed away, uh, pushing away is because that our force doesn't really care how far away you are. It will just, <clears throat> in here, we're just getting the nearest force. So this piece, for example, that is flying away, this big, they, this big guy here, it's tracing or finding the force from a point maybe over there. And it's getting the same amount of force uh, the other guys are that is closer to that point, right? Because they are all just getting the near point. Okay, so I need to actually use the distance to um, 
to actually make it weaker when the distance is a little far away. Okay. So I need to again get the distance. Okay. So I need to know where it is. Where is the the point we're sourcing now? So near point position will be equals to uh, point again. Here I'm gonna look for the same context. I'm gonna ask for the position this time. I'm asking the same point. So near point none, right? So where you are? Where is this force we're getting? Where is this point we're getting our force from? Where is it? Is it far away? So I need to know the distance. So this is gonna be a float. Distance will be equals to our position, right? Uh, our position minus that near position, near point position, right? Uh, we got a vector, right? We're gonna ask for the length. So this is gonna be the distance. And then we're gonna use this distance to rescale our force. So, um, let's actually change that to vector force. And then the actual force we do will be V at force, will be the force we're tracing without any concern of the distance. Now we'll be timing with a channel we can call fallout distance. Right, and that channel will be used to subtract the distance so that the higher the, the distance is, the smaller this value will be. We normalize that by dividing the results to the same channel. Fall of distance, and then we clamp that to zero and one, so that when distance gets too high, it will not go negative. Okay. All right. So now this force will be <coughs> getting weaker and weaker. And then when the distance is far away, maybe uh, let's try 0.8. Right. So when the piece is 0.8 unit away, for example, this guy should be like further than one meter from that, uh, from any of the points. Then this guy will basically not have any force because this this distance is too much you know, to actually get any force because we're multiplying that, multiplying the force with that. Okay, so now if we go play again, we should be seeing a much stable result and also the forces are mostly only applied on, these, uh, on the areas that are closer to the breaking point. All right. Cool, we don't have any constraint yet, so everything will still fall down. It doesn't matter what force you're applying, right? They will fall down even without the force. So that's totally fine. We'll do constraint uh, later, but for now what we have is a working force that is really blowing away the pieces in this area. We can, of course, make that force stronger. Let's try maybe a 20 instead of uh, <clears throat> 10. That should give me better results. Now one more thing we can do before we wrap up this one is we can create an enable, create a enable solver here to just have a burst of force instead of keep pushing things away. So here I'm going to say at f smaller than 5 so that only from frame 1 to frame 5 that's when we're pushing things away. After that we will not pushing things away anymore. Uh, let's try 25, so we're getting stronger force, but lesser time. So we will see a burst, and then things will stop accelerating anymore.
All right, so I have play blast this part. As you can see, it's blowing a little bit on the edge, but everything's falling down because of the gravity. So uh, there's not much we can do with it uh, if we don't have any uh, constraints. So uh, we're gonna move on to constraint in the next tutorial. But for now, this is what we have. And yeah, let's stop this one now. In the next one, we're gonna move on to constraints. See you next time.